<laughs> nice. Alright guys, you voted for it, so here it is. I have to remind again, this is mostly a video I've written almost a year ago, so if you have any complaints, then take it up with 2018 German Peter. But let's go. So I've been noticing a lot of negativity surrounding the game lately. People claiming that TF2's quality has essentially only been going downhill, especially since the Jungle Inferno update. Yes, I know, it's a very topical video. I mean, when did the update release? Like 3-4 months ago or almost 2 years ago? Yikes! Talk about reaction time. Basically, a whole lot of players are essentially saying that TF2 is now, after 11 years, finally getting worse, whereas before it was always PG Keen. But I'm not talking about them pointing out obvious problems that have actually appeared, but more so about them focusing on only the negatives and completely dismissing the positives, and more importantly, the negative problems that have always been there, some of which have also been fixed. Now, I'm definitely not excusing Valve for their actions. Everything I said in my It's All Valve's Fault video still rings true to this day. I support the TF team and not Valve as a company, and even then I'm highly critical. I'm also not saying that these issues are relevant, nor that you shouldn't be concerned about them. All I want to convey is that you really shouldn't be too surprised about any of this, because it's always been there in front of you, right under your nose, on your plate and other idioms. You probably didn't even notice them, or you just got used to them, since, let's be honest, it doesn't really matter in the long run, does it? And honestly, we, and yes I'm saying we because this also concerns me, should have seen this coming years ago. Got it? Great. Then let's start with the topic that pretty much inspired me to make this video in the first place. Like a year ago. Ah yes, Jungle Inferno. More like Jungle in Fartno, am I right? Man, wasn't that a bad update even after all this wait? I mean, yeah, it was pretty subpar and the wait for it wasn't really worth it, but come on, it's not even part of the worst updates of the game. We've had ones that were way, way worse. The most quote-unquote recent example is probably Meet Your Match, which replaced our beloved quick play with matchmaking that no one asked for. Stupid move? Yeah, definitely. Matches have suffered as a result, with heavy team imbalances being one of the major problems. Another issue was the hasty addition of competitive, which is still pretty broken to this day. They sort of attempted to fix it with the Blue Moon pack, but many problems still persist, the state of comp as an example. Couldn't we have just stuck with quick play? I mean, that was a perfect system, wasn't it? Well, remember how up until quick play, the community itself was responsible for the hosting of servers? Whether that was overall a good or bad thing is debatable. But it did ruin many communities since after the implementation of Valve servers, pretty much 90% of all community servers ended up in the dirt. And you can imagine how well that went over for the players. So don't be surprised by Valve quote unquote suddenly changing the way the game is being played. I mean, overall not much has changed besides the way you get into games now. Is that good? Bad? It's debatable. But it's really nothing new. Because as Ricey... Rai... Rai... Sivi... Reykjavik said... Reversing decisions made in the past isn't new at Valve Software. Team Fortress 2 is simply the latest product to be handled as such. But that's not the only bad thing about Jungle Inferno, right? They added only 5 new weapons and about half of them suck. True. They did, however, rebalance a huge amount of other weapons, or at least attempted to do so, which is ultimately more rewarding in the long run. But why? Isn't it much better to have cool new weapons rather than the old boring ones? Kinda. But what good is a new weapon if it's bad? Let's take a look at another gigantic update which also had 4 days and added a whole bunch of new exciting weapons to the game. The Uber update. It added a whole 21 of them. How cool is that? Well, not so cool when you consider that the amount of actually good weapons can be counted on one hand, with the overwhelming majority of them being incredibly imbalanced, some still to this day. Some were severely overpowered, others were severely underpowered, and the rest were just kinda… eh. Don't get me wrong, there were a lot of good weapons added too. But the fact that they were still being rebalanced heavily 6 years later makes it seem almost like Valve only added them because they would look good, not because they would actually be a good addition to the game. So that's why balancing existing weapons is overall better, because then you're left with a few good ones instead of hundreds of awful ones. Did Valve succeed at that? Not entirely, but it seems like they learned the lesson though. Mostly. Hey, at least they're making an effort. Kinda sad I'm saying like that's a notable thing. 
Back on the topic of Jungle Inferno, it is admittedly kinda weird how the majority of Pyro's unlocks didn't get changed in any way, considering that this update was just for him. Her? Them. However, let's again go back, back, back. This time to the Pyromania update, Pyro's second update. Again, new weapons added, and again the majority of them being awful. And how many weapons did Pyro receive? One. The Pyrovision skins don't count. And at least Jungle Inferno changed the way Flames and Airblast worked, which Pyromania didn't even attempt. No, but at least it gave us Pyrovision, like that makes up for it. Okay, it totally does. At least for me. Shut up, I love my Pinker Paw. The pointy point of all of this is just to show you that, yeah, the Jungle Inferno update wasn't all so great. It could have been better. But at the same time, it could have also been a hell of a lot worse. We've had some bad updates, and I mean bad ones. But where are we right now? Oh look, we're still here. How curious. Almost like no matter how garbage the updates are, the community either doesn't care or it just persists. Almost like the Pyro's flame itself. It hey, 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 hey. okay, okay, I stumbled with the flowery talk. Because all this talk of questionable design decisions brings me to my next topic, which is... As I pointed out earlier, Valve nowadays focuses on balancing weapons in their updates rather than adding new stuff. This results in certain designs, however, that a lot of people don't seem to agree with. For example, removing the Sandman and Flying Guillotine combo or incredibly nerfing the Ambassador. And yet, not even that is a recent trend, since Valve has been doing this with, well, pretty much every update. I'm not even going to list any examples, because weapons have changed so much with every patch that there's only a handful of them that remain untouched. The Persian Persuader, for example, has been changed so much in fact, that it almost doesn't even resemble the original a single bit anymore. And that's not necessarily a bad thing. Finding the sweet spot for balancing is tricky, especially because game design is not an exact science. You can put a lot of thought into it, but ultimately you're just throwing ideas at the wall to see what sticks. And sometimes your tweaks have to be outlandish, just to see how far you can really go with your ideas. For example, did you know that the Sandman originally launched the baseball on primary fire, which stunned even übercharged players, with the only downside being half damaged against unstunned players and removing double jump? And this took them like 6 months to change! Or did you know that the Blood Sauger only had the downside of not being able to get random crits? Like that's it, it was a straight upgrade the majority of the time. And they also did this with a ton of other weapons like the Power Jack or the Islander. Valve really loved the idea of random crits and genuinely thought they impacted the game in such a major way that removing them on certain weapons was actually a reasonable way to balance them. I don't think that Valve will ever give up random crits because they seem way too proud of them. Hey actually, let's stay on that topic. You hate random crits because they are so annoying to play against? Well, have I great news for you! Because as I found out with my own super galactic brain powers, Random crits used to be even more common before 2009. Yeah! Your base chance to get random crits used to be more than twice as much as it is now, and the max chance was almost twice as much. So if you hate them now, then remember that you could have hated them twice as much. But that wasn't even the only awful design decision they added. Remember random damage spreads? Oh, what's that? You just hit a soldier for 100 damage with a direct hit of your rocket, and now you landed another direct hit? And you think you can actually kill him with that shot? Nah, because I just decided to do 99 damage instead of 100. And this took them years to remove even though the community hated it pretty much since the beginning from what I've heard at least. So the next time you complain about a bad mechanic, just remember, it could and used to be even worse. And over time, they'll probably patch it out. But what they can patch out is... If you take the pyro changes of the Jungle Inferno update at face value, it may seem that Valve doesn't really know what to do with pyro. They did make flames more consistent, but at the same time broke them, because now they're even more opaque, linger on the floor and still do damage when they're invisible. They also accidentally made spraying and praying, aka WN1, even more rewarding than tracking the enemy. What gives Valve? It's like you lack the ability to see how your game is actually played. Yes, yes they do. Valve almost failed to understand how the game really worked since the very beginning in fact. Don't believe me? Then take a good look at the tutorial of the game which informs players to use melee weapons if an enemy gets too close, instead of just using the rocket launcher even though that's almost always the better choice despite splash damage. But let's actually go back to Pyro. 
What is Pyro's role? Flank? Support? Defense? They're listed as offense, but they're not really as offensive as someone like Demo Man, who deserves that spot much more in my opinion. Valve, how can you not know what Pyro's job is supposed to be? You must have had at least an idea for them during Team Fortress Classic, right? No, no they didn't! Pyro was actually really, really broken in TFC. To elaborate the main problems, I will quote an article on the Daily's buff. Spoof? Hmm. First of all, Afterburn only dealt 8 whole damage before extinguishing itself. It could be stacked, but even then it only remained viable in close quarters. Pyro's arsenal was also pretty weak, to the point that their shotgun was a weaker version of the double barrel shotgun that almost everyone else, including Medic, received. And remember how useful Pyros are in TF2? Well, they aren't in TFC, because the Pyro is the only class that can throw the Engineer Metal, in this case cells, because they use it for their flamethrower. Not to mention that Pyro didn't even have Air Blast, something they only added later to TF2, about one year after its release. And it finally turned Pyro from a bad class to a slightly less bad class. And I mean, Pyro wasn't even the only class in TF2 that didn't work as Valve intended. You wanna know what the meta for Medic was? Healing and buffing teammates? Nah, that's logical. Try capturing the objective. Yeah, back when I tried out TFC a few years ago, I told one of the medics to please heal me, to which someone else replied that the medic's job was not to heal, but to cap. Actually, let's go back to TF2's power for a sec and what I said about their flames earlier. Jungle Inferno made the flames more opaque. Sounds terrible? Well, that is actually in the spirit of what Valve intended. To add to the pyro's short range lethality, we made the flamethrower effects visually noisy, which helps disorient opponents long enough for the flames to finish them off. Think about it. Valve created a character with the sole purpose of being annoying to play against. So all of those WM1 pyros you see running around? Just according to Keikaku. And this trend of not knowing what to do with pyro continued throughout the years. Even with the air blast, jetpack and more consistent flames, they're still just… meh. They don't really fill any role completely, just a bit of all roles. Air Blast for defense and support, and average speed and flames for offense and ambush. So I think that no matter what Valve does with Pyro, they'll always just be a jack of all trades, but a master of none. I got into Payday 2 fairly late, only a couple of years back. I always thought it was a pretty alright game, and aside from desync and some crashes, I never really had many problems with it. That was until I watched Payday YouTubers like Connor Shaw, who talked about the game in great detail and how truly broken and stitched together it really was. Much like I do with TF2. And it made me realize that a game can seem perfectly fine on the outside, but be bad on the inside without you being able to really notice that. But that doesn't make the game inherently bad. Ultimately, most of TF2's problems don't really matter. Should they be improved? Of course! But do they make the game not enjoyable? No. Of course you shouldn't ignore them either, they need to be pointed out so that the game can improve. But you also can't forget the good aspects at the same time. And don't forget, constructive criticism always goes both ways. Though I have to mention that certain things did get in fact worse. Updates have gotten more scarce, the quality of updates itself has suffered, namely Smith's Mess and Scream Fortress, and it's also been years since we've gotten comics or even a good blog post. Then again, when the TF team does release a larger update, they really go all out. Jungle Inferno was filled to the brim with new content, new mechanics, rebalances and even a really high quality SFM. So it seems that there's still some passion left in the team, even if they don't always show it. And you know, no game survives 11 years without having something good about it. I pointed out in my last video, no not that one, no not that one either, yep yeah, that one, that the players have good reason to stick around with the game for such a long while. So I'm asking you guys, do you think that all of these problems are really significant in the end? Please say no because otherwise this whole video will have been pointless. Maybe there's even some major improvements over the years that people completely overlooked? Do let me know down below in the comments because I'd really like to hear. And please also let me know if you enjoyed voting for the next video or not. But for now I'd like to thank my patrons specifically… One Truma, 404, Alexis Chavez, Ben Isaacson, Frozen Spaghetti, House, Onik Andrev, Ren Marty, Shuri, The Sabu, Zankulak Lurk and unfortunately not as always anymore. Xenomite. 
Thank you so much for supporting my channel, it really means a lot. And just a side note, yes, I am still working on Hotline Fortress, don't worry, you don't have to keep asking. Anyway, I'd like to thank you very much for watching, have a wonderful day and goodbye.